Hey guys, you're out in the garage with Easy Jeezy. I'm answering a, a viewer's question about how did I make the top for my dune buggy. This is uh, some ideas for your top and anybody else that's interested in the top. Now, I've, I've had several attempts at making this video and had several different tops. I've been running naked now for the last year or so, and I think I'm going to keep doing that because ever since I got the Baja out there, I just don't drive this car that I, much. I don't drive it as much, so I'm probably going to keep it naked. Uh, now, here are some things that I've discovered. I, just as luck would have it, uh, I was struggling with the idea. I had this piece of plywood. This is three-quarter inch plywood, and I had it setting on top. This was on the top. And then this was the finish side that was on the bottom. And I put that on the top. And then I covered up the size with this 3-inch aluminum angle. And I did that so that it would hide the sides of the 3 quarter inch plywood. And I could make these tie-down points. And it would be above the 3 quarter inch. And it would be real sturdy. Because uh, I was just originally I made this... Uh, framework on my car so that I could haul the kayak up there. That was my intention from the get-go. I already owned the kayak when I got this second body kit here and started on my second uh, dune buggy. And uh, so that was the thought process in that. And that was held in place simply by four of these U-bolts that had uh, some rubber tubing to protect the paint and then the nuts and stuff were on the top and you couldn't see them because you had the channel the aluminum channel covered that up well the guys that I was riding with uh, everybody had the the they made them themselves and I they just you know it takes a lot of time I don't have the right kind of sewing machine nobody was really offering to help me make one and I got some ideas from their stuff because these uh, dune buggies have a channel in the frame and they work that you put uh, some guys were screwing uh, folding over and screwing some pieces of aluminum and forcing it in there the expensive factory made ones are you know they never had uh, a roll bar frame like this mine was in the roll bar frame and what happened was, uh, lo and behold, one day I go outside to check my mail, and there's this uh, top laying in the street. And, you know, I nobody around here has a Jeep. Must have been somebody driving through or something. And uh, I left it laying there for a while, and, and nobody claimed it. So I said, well, great. I'm looking for a top anyhow. It's funny how sometimes when you ask for things, they suddenly appear. So it's like it already has this little piece of plastic this is just a standard cj5 bikini top it has a piece of plastic sewed right in there and this is be how this works well i went to one of these four by four shops and i asked him i says do you happen to sell that channel that goes on the cj5s for guys that want to take the hard top off and put the cloth top off and that's what this piece of channel was it cost me like twenty four dollars and so i cut this piece of wood to fit it It was already pre-bent and it was like well you know it was like twenty four bucks so i thought well i want to see how this works out just in general so i cut that i didn't want to start cutting the top up and contouring it because i knew from my other one even though i had protection there was times when you're driving and the sun's on one side and you're going for you know 50 60 miles uh south or north or something like that that you get blasted by the sun so and plus you get wet from the rain so i kind of like this just by coincidence how this even came out to my the little corner came out on this card on this turn on my roll cage so i thought okay how can i do this because it, when you pull this back it kind of comes back here and it tightens all up see and i just use a bungee cord and and keep it in tension that's what that's what i was doing here so i thought okay before i start cutting and hacking i want to see how this is going to work and because i have this windshield frame with a roll bar above it this Oh, goes in here but because of the angle going up it kept popping out popping out so what you do you need that 
180 degrees. You need to get it in there and then come straight back. And this this first trip, this is just a two inch piece of pine, I think, and it it just worked out perfect. So I thought, okay, we'll we'll give it a test run. And I I clamped it on here somehow. I think I, want, I put a clamp through the top like this, up and down. Just just some C clamps or vice grips or some damn thing, just to hold it in place. And I took off to uh, do some errands in town. And oh my gosh, you know, this looks dorky. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. Having that wood stick out past the frame looks dumb as shit. It just doesn't flow with the lines. But from a practicality standpoint, oh my gosh. That gave me so much more shade than my standard hardtop that, you know, was coming back here and going to the other one. It was like, wow, what a difference. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just leave that on there and curve it down here. Well, then that creates a problem of getting in and out of the car easy. And, you know, by golly, like I said in the beginning, I drive the Baja almost exclusively now uh, all year round. So it... Uh, I just decided I wouldn't have any top and I just go naked because it makes it so much easier to get in and out of the vehicle and having this space over here when you go to lift yourself up or go to get in and out and throw your leg in and out uh, my buggy sits a little bit higher I've lifted it because I wanted room for the uh, paddle tires on the back so uh, I like to just go naked now and what I did when I had the, saw, the the wood top on is I would take something like this foam. This isn't the right size, but I would take a piece of this foam and just lay it there. And the wind would hold it in. I think I used like a couple of these little tie downs. This is probably one of them right here. Just uh, kind of held it in place and the wind did the rest. You know, kind of tucked it in there. Otherwise, the, the air coming off the hood would come up, hit the windshield, come up, and then whew, you get more of that wind and turbulence down in your face. And rain, too, if it was raining hard. And this just isn't the kind of car that's fun to drive in the rain, uh, just like any other convertible. If you're going fast enough, uh, most of it goes over the top of you. But if you're sitting in a stoplight, you're just like a guy in a motorcycle. And I've often thought about just carrying my uh, old motorcycle helmet with me, a full-face helmet. Uh, that way you've got the face shield, you've got extra protection, you've got your head covered, your ears, things are quieter. Uh, it's not such a bad idea. The only thing that I have reservations about wearing a helmet is that when you're driving around in town and a policeman or somebody sees you, they think, well, what the hell is that guy got that dune buggy? He's wearing a crash helmet. He's, he's on the verge of doing something or he's running from something or it just doesn't go right. How many car people do you see in cars, convertibles, that wear crash helmets? You know, just on a nice day, it's nice just to hop on the car run over to Dairy Queen or uh, go into the gym. We don't go to the Dairy Queen anymore. We go to the gym now, right? We go to yoga lessons and go to the gym and work out. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyhow, even my kids, they live like 45 miles away. That's a 90-mile drive. And I guarantee when you get home in this car from that drive, you're exhausted. You're tired. It just tears you, tears you up. Uh, so I hope that gives you some ideas, Mike. Uh, those are some some ways that uh, I solve problems. Let me uh, let me put you up on the stand here, and uh, I'll put that wooden top up there. Now, you know I do have that front windshield frame. It goes all the way down. It's bolted to the floor. My steering wheel bracket is bolted to that uh, crossbar. It's nothing is attached to the fiberglass. I've got that speedometer down there, but all my dashes, electrical and switches are external so you don't have to lay underneath the car to get to the wiring. It's a nice, neat setup, and the windshield can come off, and as a uh, matter of fact, it fits right inside this rear roll bar frame. This is inch and a half uh, tubing, and then uh, I'll just show you what I got here. I would have this... Uh, three-quarter inch plywood and I made it heavy-duty so that weight wasn't an issue and if a if a rollover or something happened it wouldn't just come off in a thousand pieces and let's see how did that work okay and then to hide the edge 
and hide the bolts that we're holding it on. Uh, it was something like that. So that's how I had mine set up. And like I said, right now I'm running naked. And I don't know what the pros and cons are. You'll have to decide. Hope that gives some folks ideas. Here's the other thing. I always carried an umbrella. This is a big old umbrella. And uh, I don't even know it probably fall apart. It's so, but I figured, and I used it a few times. I even did it in some videos where I was out in the, on a run and it started to rain. Usually the rain just passes over here. Uh, it's just a cloud burst and then it dries out. So we went under some trees and I popped my umbrella. And I had the, I had the roof on, but I still popped my umbrella because it was coming in from the side. And that gave me some protection from the weather. So all kinds of little options that you have. There's more! I need a burrito. That's what I need.